Men Voices Matter Too. That's the name of the organization founded by Tamika Castillo, who is to my left. Welcome Good to the morning. show. No stranger to the program. No, I'm not. And you've brought with you Nicholas Khan, who's an inmate on remand That's at correct. Golden Grove. Good morning, Nicholas. Good morning. And Krishna Badesi, who's the program coordinator administration uh, at the prison of the prison yes. service. Good, Good to morning. have you on the program this morning. Thank I'm going to start with Tamika. Tell us about Men Voices Matter to what is it about? It's an initiative geared to breaking men down from the norm. Mm -hmm. So for me, I saw the need for this particular campaign. Yes. I think men need to be a lot more comfortable speaking right. about their fears, yes. their insecurities, their failures, their disappointments. Yeah. So here I came so along. So why was it important for you to jump into this? So you could have been doing so many other things. Why That's correct. Um, I think because men are neglected mm -hmm. con continuously. We, ne we neglect them. We ne neglect their needs, their wants, their emotions. Mm -hmm. So I decided to be the provider of that particular And service. was it because you had a personal experience that um, channeled you in that direction? One reason is because I was seeing a lot of women in empowerment groups right. and the bell went off in my head like okay yes. we are providing for women why are we not providing for men yes so to make I decided to provide for men. <laughs> well <laughs> good on you and Thank part you. of that is that you've been documenting some of your experiences so I'm creating my first documentary yes where um, thus far I have interviewed people like Nicholas uh -huh. I did interviews with men between the ages of 25 and 30 uh -huh. I had conversations with psychologists we had conversations with men and women. I think it was important for them to sit face to face to each other mm -hmm. so they could understand the needs and wants and we could clarify things that women feel yeah. and men feel and we could come to that common ground. Yes. Next week I'm doing boys between the ages of 17 and 24. Right. I think they are at the prime of now discovering what is manhood, mm -hmm. what type of man I would like to be. So it's a crucial stage for them. Yeah. and. I want to hear their voices. Okay, so we want to hear Nicholas's voice as well. Yes. And uh, you were one of our leaders of now, previously on the program. Right. So, of course, you're no stranger. Nicholas, though, uh, so you are currently an inmate on remand at Golden Grove. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, so tell us, what what are you in prison for? I'm in prison for a capital offense, actually convicted yeah. for a capital offense. Okay. And, and, and that's happened 10 years ago. 10 years ago. How old are you now? 28. So that you were 18 years old when it happened? 17. 17. And tell us about your story. What's your story? Well, my story basically is my challenges that I came to Tamika with. Uh -huh. Because I've been on the scene for a while. People know me from performing in the National Poetry Slam. Right. But they don't really know my story. Uh -huh. They know I incarcerated. Uh -huh. So... With this movement to make a carry about, I felt as though it was time for to tell people my story. So who is Nicholas Khan? Tell me now. Well, <laughs> a Nicola, little bit. <laughs> Nicholas Khan, well, a school dropout. What age? 13 years. Why? Challenges at home mm -hmm. that I was too young to understand. Mm -hmm. And I end up on the streets and live a street life until the age of 17 I was incarcerated. Were you a member of a gang? I wasn't part of a gang, but I did activities, criminal activities, yeah. not to be proud of, but I did activities, I ended up in prison, unable to read, because I dropped out of school, and while in prison, I wake up one morning and say, this now going to be my reality, you understand, and I educate myself, prison service, I had programs, school programs, and educate myself until I found myself with a talent. Right. And that was poetry. Mm -hmm. And I met my publisher, well, I was called a man lifesaver because she saw my work and published my work automatically, which I'm grateful for. I like my second mother because in prison is a hopeless place. And she gave me hope. And from there, I kept going until I met the Two Cents Movement, founder Jack Lord, and he introduced me to Spoken Word. And I've been in the Spoken Word in National Poetry Slam for the past two years, this year and last year. Mm -hmm. I was a semi-finalist. And people see me on the scene, but they don't know my story. Right. And this is with me and Tamika sit down and did the interview. And I was able to talk about my challenges growing up 
Japan Law School, deal with peer pressure in school, and being in prison. And if you had to talk to yourself at age 13 now that you have the benefit of hindsight, what would you tell? I would tell myself, think about the consequences, the choices they make, choices are serious. And most of the time, we just make our choice without thinking about the consequence mm -hmm. down the road. But did you have anybody in your life at that time talking to you and were you not listening or what was happening at the age 13? I had my mom, my stepfather. They was talking to me, but at that age, they're thinking that he's your own man and they're thinking you know better, mm -hmm. which I didn't know. And that was just blew me out of proportion and I just couldn't take the pressure at home because I felt as though I was in love or, or not accepted. But they did love me, they did accept me. I was just, I was just too young to understand what was going on. Yeah. And I just pick up myself and walk out the house. Yeah. Tell myself I was a big man and yeah. the streets now, the streets now nice. Yeah. And that was the reason why I came out with the interview to tell people my story. To show them that I, going, I went through what you going through right now. Yeah. You understand? And People like to say I'm doing better than people in society. And I like to show them it's not even that. I just want to show you nothing is impossible because I can't in jail. Publish two books. How long will you be in jail for? No, oh, well, three more years. Three more years, okay. And um, Krishna Bedesi, you're the program coordinator, administrative prison service. Yeah. Uh, what's the relationship here with the prison service and Tamika's group? Men voices matter too, and how does it impact lives like Nicholas? Well, one of the key things that the prison service does is uh, provide opportunities for clients to rehabilitate themselves, and that means that we'd have to partner with a lot of uh, like-minded organizations and individuals. Mm -hmm. And um, Tamika and her organization is just one of the groups that we partner with right. in an effort to provide as many opportunities as well as appropriate opportunities for people to uh, rehabilitate themselves mm -hmm. and prepare for re-entry into society. That is our main focus. Okay. And so you work with the young people, or not just young people, men in particular? Men in, in the particular. Prison? Yeah. Not mm -hmm. in just in the prison, overall. overall but okay. when I started, I made sure that I touched every sector yes. of our society. Mm -hmm. And I think most times people forget our boys inside. Yeah. And we operate like they don't exist, and mm -hmm. they are in a totally different world, yeah. but they still grieve. Yeah. They still feel lonely, they mm -hmm. still feel lost, and I want our conversations to shift. I want people to understand it's a burning issue that we need to place more attention on because mm -hmm. we can't put them inside there and forget them and expect them to come back outside mm -hmm. as perfect citizens to mm -hmm. deal with people who are already on the outside. And when is the documentary due? Um, November. November. Yes. All right, so I know you're going to be back <laughs> in time to launch it. <laughs> And I trust that it will be on our station. Uh, definitely, <laughs> definitely. And I want to congratulate you on the work that you're doing. Thank you Continued so much. Continued work and success. Tamika Castillo, founder of Men Voices Matter 2. Nicholas Can, you know, keep keep your head up. Keep, yes, definitely. Keep definitely. positive. Keep definitely. influencing the lives of other young people and helping them to understand that they need to walk the straight and narrow path. Yeah. Yeah. So thank you for coming and sharing a bit of your story. You get the rest in the documentary. Definitely. And Krishna Badesi, Program Coordinator Administration for the Prison Service, thank you again for the work that you do yes. with uh, the Prison Service. We're taking a few messages. Come right back here. We still have more to come before the top of the hour, so stay with us.